Okay, so far for assignment eight, we have been able to use the, um, the type tools in Illustrator to create a vector type solution that we outputted as black. This is black with just a, a really small white offset stroke and saved as a PNG and uploaded into Photobucket. So it will show up on different backgrounds. And then we also just did some color variations. And we did those color variations within Photoshop. We have not yet finished up the poster, but that is easily done just by adding a background. Let me find the file. <laughs> So you can basically take this PNG. Oh, here it is, Photoshop file. Uh, and that has our spot illustration, you know, in it or our logo, whatever the text is for. But the first part of the assignment is just focusing on the type solution. So adding a background is pretty easy, but you need to be inspired. And so um, you can often look at existing posters, you know, different things. We're going to, I'm going to use some of my compositing skills here. I'm going to remind you about a red bubble, which is under your links as well. And that's an option for you to, to see how your images would look on a variety of products and backgrounds. And so I have the unicorn concept illustration here without the text with the text, right? So if I look at that, then I scroll down to these other products. I'll get back to you in a second. I did restart my computer, so hopefully we'll be able to move everything a little bit more quickly. So if I look at these different products, come on. I was actually pretty curious about how it looked on the canvas bags. And I liked that kind of color. So here we see the latest one, right? So I might want to use something like that as a background for a poster. A poster with just a pure white background is not all that interesting. So I'm going to turn on my spot illustration. I'm going to turn on um, my gray background. I turn on all these different coloring options from assignment seven. The color holds the whole shebang. Whatever you decide you want. And then I get to decide if I want the black text or the colored text or something in between, right? I think I liked that. And sure enough, that's what I, that's what I uploaded. So now I need to make this poster size. And remember we made our spot illustration to be at least 12 inches by 350 pixels per inch. So our poster is just gonna expand the canvas size around that. And so right now it's 14 by 16. I'm going to go ahead and make it uh, 16 by 20. So 16 inches wide by 20 inches tall. It's a good standard size. As long as it's larger than 12 inches, you know, 12 by something, you're fine. Uh, there aren't particularly standard poster sizes that we can print in the class. But 16 by 20 is the closest to a standard size we can print in the class because we can print up to 17 by 22 inches. The other thing we want to do is refill that. So I'm going to take the gray background layer and fill it once again with gray. So that entire 16 by 20 by 350 pixel per inch canvas is filled. And then I'm going to go ahead and increase the canvas size one more time to go to 17 by 22, the full printer 
size. And that's going to give me a border. So what I want your posters to have is not just your type solution and some sort of image that you created, either your logo or your spot illustration, but also a background and also a border, just a blank white border. Now for the border, I'm going to go to my blank white layer. I'm going to unlock it and I'm going to say edit fill with 100% white. So if my border were just a flat gray, then I'd be done. And of course, you can arrange your, your graphic and your type any way you like within this poster, and it can be a horizontal poster or a vertical poster. But the problem is the gray just isn't all that interesting, right? But it's more interesting than plain white. It's more interesting than black. I don't really need the black anymore. So what can I do? Well, I can make a copy of the, of the gray. I could select it all using the magic wand, right? I could paint it like we painted the sky and maybe paint with a gradient. So let's see, use my dark sky gradient. Ooh, it's nice. It's only at 39% opacity. Let's try it at 100%. Or I can try it at 76%, go a different angle. Ooh, that's nice. So that's one way you can get a background for a poster. Because it's digitally made, that background is going to be perfectly clean. And you see how the drop shadows and any effects for your spot illustration or your type are going to play against that nicely. And because it's a gradient instead of a flat color, it's going to print better on our inkjet printers. Since we're not silk screening this, we are printing it with dots. <laughs> it's better not to have large areas of flat because ink, inkjet printers, dot matrix printers, anything that injects dots of ink, it creates a pattern, even if it's a randomized pattern. And whenever you just do the same expanse of the same color, you're more likely to get tool marks in the printing because the pattern will just repeat and repeat and repeat. But if you put a slight gradation into it like that, um, that's a lot less likely to happen in the print shop. Okay, so that's one option, but I can build on top of that. And now I'm gonna be inspired by this and I'm gonna try to, instead of painting a canvas bag, I'm going to composite. So we go back to our compositing skills and I wanna look for a canvas bag as an image and I want to look for, this is a poster, so I want large. And then I want uh, like very large. And I wish, I'll put texture in. I wish you could still uh, go bigger, right? Uh, but this one is looking good. So when you put texture in, often you get some of these design options that people are uh, willing to share. But more and more of those are going away. They're actually still on the internet. You just have to look longer for them for these free options from sites that are Creative Commons sites like Flickr because they're more and more becoming stock photos, you know, with um, watermarks. So be careful of that. Here's a burlap texture that looks very corn like. I like that. It actually reminds me there's an artist. named Ansem Seal, a San Antonio artist who, who did corn prints. He's a photographer, digital photographer. And so if I could find really big images of his corn prints where he kind of used a, uh, a scanner that he developed that flattens out three-dimensional space, that could be a really nice background. And since we're compositing, we're transforming it into our own. Now, of course, I don't want the background to overshadow the artwork, right? But it might be fun to play with some of these. And then, of course, we want to open the image in a new tab, see the image on its own, and see how large it is, or in this case, not large enough, no matter what Google said. Open image in new tab. Ah, uh, this one has watermarks on it. Bummer. But they're pretty subtle. It's a pretty high quality image. I might be able to use that. But then also look at the similar images. Here we go. There are watermarks on that too. 
It's getting harder and harder to find. Let's see. Um, texture fill canvas. Free. <laughs> Here we go. Free stock images. It's only 300 pixels, though. It might have to be this dirty canvas. Or this one. DeviantArt, always helpful. I think it could be so hard to find just natural canvas. Ooh, this one's nice. Grungy paper. So you, you get lots of options. Open image in new tab. Because it's a background, it doesn't need to be huge, but good if it's at least a thousand pixels. All right, uh, it's watermarks. And this I don't see any watermarks on. Up oh, there, there, crazy. Stock photos, man. Yep. All right. But we can always make our own vignetting. We know how to do all that stuff. And this is another one. This one's nice and clean. I like that. Because we can always adjust the color. It's why we lear learned all those compositing skills early on. I can color this to look like canvas if I want to. Okay. And this does not look very big, so we might have to give up the Anson seal idea. Yep, that's terrible. But any kind of creative idea that you come across. Feel free to indulge. Well, that's pretty good. We might be able to use that. All right, so how do I do that? Well, I just bring in do it with the dirty canvas first. That object, I place it, keep it as a smart object. I'm gonna lock it into proportions of my 16 by 20. All right. And that makes a more interesting poster, All right? Then I can do things like play with layer styles. So soft light. So now I have the blue behind, but I have the, the canvas texture. I don't know if I like those little spots, but I could, I could fix those with the clone stamp or with an even better tool to just use the lasso. Let's do some of the big ones here. Lasso around it. Um, I first have to rasterize it to do this and say image or edit fill. And instead of fill with white, black, or gray, you say fill with content aware at 100%. And this is like a clone stamp that will fill in patterns. So it should work great on this. So I just got rid of those stains right away. But the problem is it's like clone stamp. You'll get little copy pasty elements every once in a while. I'll show you that again just to get rid of that. Edit, fill, content aware. And it uses whatever's outside of your selection as the information to fill in the space you've selected. Okay, so I like that. It looks pretty good. Let's add another one. What about... Let's see. This is my only hack for these web photos, is to just do the screen grab at the largest resolution they show. It's still over a thousand pixels at least. And this is only because this isn't the spot illustration itself. This is just the background and we're layering it up. 
But same thing.